Happy Super Bowl evening, guys. Yes, the Marlins saved a big transaction for Super Bowl night. Nick Gordon acquired from, from the Twins. Stephen O'Kurt going the other way. This is a Bendix masterclass, baby. Tons to get into. Where does Nick Gordon play? How does it impact everyone else on the roster? What have the Twins got in Stephen O'Kurt? Spoiler alert, not much. Tons to get into. This is Locked on Marlins. You are Locked On Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings from England and welcome to Locked On Marlins. This is an emergency podcast brought to you on Super Bowl Sunday. Yes, even on Super Bowl Sunday, there is still a Locked On Marlins for you. Thanks for making Locked On Marlins your first lesson of the day. and Welcome to the show. This is your team literally every day. I'm your host, Peter Pratt. Yes, I am British. Nevertheless, I am here for you. Hit me up on X at Miami Marlins underscore UK. Uh, there is a YouTube channel as well, guys. Make sure you hit subscribe over there too. We are growing rapido, not as rapid as what I shared earlier on Twitter. For those, if you know, you know situation, but you know, we won't dwell on that. Guys, if you're watching, you have the graphics to help you and you'll see this is an emergency pod. You know that, but also there's a guest joining me for an emergency pod. Chase, the loud Miami fan is back. How are we doing, brother? Happy Super Sunday, Peter, from around the pond. Nice to see you. Yeah, Big stuff you. to talk about it. Let's get it. This is going to be a fun one because Nick Gordon, the profile, the history, the connection to the Marlins, like there's fun here anyway. But there's like a, a collateral damage thing that we need to kind of piece together. Like what does it mean for so many other players? Like this could impact so many guys or no one, <laughs> to be honest with you. So this is going to be a really, really fun episode. Um, and there's going to be a lot of spe speculation. If you love speculation, this is probably the episode for you. You will enjoy this one. Um, but this episode is also sponsored by our good friends over at FanDuel. You can make every moment more. New customers join today. Today is the perfect day, by the way. And you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right. Why are we here? Why is there an emergency podcast on Super Bowl Sunday? The Marlins have acquired Nick Gordon from the Minnesota Twins. Yes, the Marlins and Twins have hooked up again. Stephen O'Kurt going the other way. We heard the news that Nick Gordon go to the Twins. You're thinking, oh boy, what's the return going to be here? Stephen O'Kurt. So that's the trade. Chase, specifically about this trade, we're going to get into what it means. But your immediate reaction when you heard Nick Gordon acquired for Stephen O'Kurt? Once I heard, I had to go look at what position the guy played because I didn't know much about him, to be honest. <laughs> and yeah. looking him up, you know, he has a, a short career so far. Mm. Uh, it looks like he had a broken tibula last year, took him out early. I guess that listening to the fish on first team, uh, that was against the Dodgers. Um, and really didn't see much about them. But once I saw who they gave up and what they got back, I was excited. I'm happy for it. I think it's a, a, a Bendix uh, type trade, you know, the type he'd make for the Rays, get return on really nothing. And we'll see what it happens. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Almost a wardrobe malfunction there, but <laughs> saved it at the last minute. I'm with you, mate. I'm just going to, for everyone listening, I'm going to give you an insight as to what happened. And it's pretty similar to the loud Miami fan household where trade drops. Okay, Nick Gordon, you go to baseball savant. Oh, okay. That doesn't look amazing. 2022, that looks interesting. What's that looking like? Whoa, 22, baby. The, the balloons, the bubbles, the sliders, whatever you want to call them, they are absolutely glowing red um, in 2022. So that was a big breakout campaign for Nick Gordon. However, with the Twins more generally, um, you know, I've been thinking about the Twins because the Twins have been thinking about Jesus Lozado. So I've been thinking about their roster. Fundamentally, like Nick Gordon's kind of blocked there really at this point. I think that's at the heart of this one where 
You end up with a blocked player with zero minor league options. And that is exactly the situation that an organization like the Marlins takes advantage of. They can acquire someone like Nick Gordon with huge upside, miles more upside than a Stephen O'Kurt. But the reality is, from a roster perspective, it just wasn't going to work for him in Minnesota in 2024. Thus, you send Stephen O'Kurt, but you get Nick Gordon back. Huge upside play. This is again, I mean, Chase, this is kind of in the same, and there's a lot of similarities here too. This is kind of in the same arena as the Vidal Bruhan situation too, right? Former top prospects, first round picks, hasn't quite happened. You go and get them for relatively low return. Like this feels like the types of deals that, that we're going to have to get used to, I think, right? It, it, it looks like it. I, I kind of, like the upside in this guy a little bit better than really anybody they've acquired the whole uh, off season, I guess you could say. I, I, I feel that, yeah. uh, you know, they didn't give up much for him. And no. I don't want to really talk bad about Okert, but you saw who he was <laughs> down the stretch last season, and it was rough. You know, he would be put in in certain situations uh, out of the bullpen, the tall guy with the great hair, very recognizable. Uh, but he unfortunately was starting to be recognized for blowing games, blowing holds, and really giving the other teams opportunity to come in. Uh, looking at all the trades they've made this week, I mean, this is a three, the third deal this week. If if you look yeah. at it from that standpoint, uh, they've given away one player, and that's Stephen Oker. Uh, cash mm -hmm. considerations, DFAs to others, mm -hmm. but this is the new type of uh, leadership we have now in in our team, and. It, it's a little bit away from the uh, Kimming kind of trades. You know, you're giving up yep. a name to get a name. You're, you look at the J.J. Blade for Puck move. You know, J.J. Mm -hmm. Blade was a first-round draft pick. You give him yep. up for A.J. Puck. Mm -hmm. We don't know if it's a win-win last year, but this could be a huge move. It's like, it's, a, it, it's like a raise move. You know, you bring in a, mm -hmm. a, a guy from the American League who broke out in 2022. 20, uh, you don't know what his 23 would have been, but I think he bad it hit like uh, two over 250. Uh, he had, I think, 15 career home runs two last season um, in his broken leg year. And really, it's upside, upside. That's all you can ask for. So is that the type of moves that we're going to see moving forward? Yes, this is the type of move. And the best part, you didn't give away a starter to fill a possible hole which he may be filling. For sure. I look at this one, and I thought, we'll, we'll talk about the numbers in a sec, but the one thing that stood out to me, as I've already mentioned, zero options. The same with Vidal Bruhan, zero options. And I felt I felt more strongly about Bruhan, to be honest with you, in terms of what they ended up having to give up for Bruhan, because there was a player to be named later that ended up being Jake Mangum, who I think there could have been something there. So the return... For Bruhan indicates to me that he's going to make this roster. And with Nick Gordon's, you know, 2022 behind him, you know, his the fact that he's put major league success on tape, that's how I'm going to phrase it anyway, to me says Nick Gordon's making this roster too. So there's these two dudes for me are going to be on this roster. All of a sudden, I'm looking to thinking, well, who's not going to be on this roster? You know, that's the <laughs> you start trying to piece this together because, you know, are they going to require anyone else? How is this roster going to shape up? There's a few other names that kind of stick out and you think like, okay, is there something going to happen here? So we're going to cover the first ad and then we'll want to talk about all the connections because this is all interlinked, I think. But from a numbers perspective, though, Chase, you called it out. The, you know, the 2022 20, uh, campaign in particular that we've, you know, we've mentioned multiple times already, um, that that's the one where we, you know, like I said, that's where we put it on tape, where you end up with, you know, 443 plate appearances, an OPS plus of 111. So 111 OPS plus uh, in that period. Um, nine home runs, uh, a ton of strikeouts though, by the way, 105 Ks and only 19 walks, uh, but an OPS itself of 743. So, you know, actually pl plenty of doubles. That's the other thing that stood out. 28 doubles um, for Nick Gordon in that season as well. So more of a gap hitter. Um, I guess kind of like D Gordon, you know, in some ways, you know, it's his, his half brother. So there's a bit of D in there. Um, and I think the other thing that stands out from, from 
you know, when you look at Nick Gordon is where he's been defensively. And again, this is going to lead us in, Chase. But when you look at defensively, you know, he's played a little bit of shortstop at the big league level, some second base, plenty of outfield as well. And I would say, you know, it's been more heavily weighted to a corner outfield, but there's definitely been some center field as well. So another util guy, but definitely doesn't look like a shortstop, I would say, to the naked eye at this point. So, you know, defensively, like if he was to be a starter, where would he be starting in your opinion? You're bottlenecked right now at shortstop from going from having no one to having four players that possibly could. So it's going to be a fun spring. I'm looking forward to this battle. This is yeah, something yeah. like some teams don't get the opportunity to experience. And this is what spring is all about. But mm. if you look at the roster as constructed, you'd say, well, they're going to be battling it out for shortstop. And is there another move out here for an outfielder? Because we're kind of bottlenecked in the outfield, too. You, you you just cleared a spot for him because Okert was going to take up a 26-man spot. So you have that spot for for, for um, the newly acquired uh, player. And I could see him – someone said on Twitter, it's Twitter, they probably brought him in to play left field be, uh, to hit right-handed pitching. Well, I hear that, and I go, wait, DLC, he could hit – both lefties and righties, sometimes mm -hmm. not great, sometimes great. But mm. the right fielder, as finished last season, I'm not going to say his name because everybody thinks I hate him, but he can't <laughs> hit. He can't hit lefties. Okay, he can't hit lefties or left-handed pitchers. So if you're going to have a spot for him, Sanchez. Oops, I said it. He was going to be the odd man out coming into last season. Uh, mm. Fish on first wrote an article about it when he was struggling in April. Well, if he starts out struggling this early this season or even in the spring, can't you see uh, 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 this player uh, t taking uh, right field? I could see Nick Gordon taking right field right off the bat. And I, I kind of like it. You know, he had a decent average. If he can, he has speed. He can cover the field, help Jazz from running into walls, maybe call him off here and there. Yeah. I could see him in right field or short. Unless he could play catcher somewhere here. <laughs> but uh, that, that's kind of where I could see it happening. It's going to be a battle. And you've got to love that going into spring. Yeah, for sure. It's a, it's a great point that, you know, listen, there is a battle because there's a lot of dudes fighting for jobs that are ultra versatile and not specialists. And so, you know, jobs are up for grabs. Playing time's up for grabs. Heavy platoons are in are in play, I think. So... I, ahead, I think you tweeted it out, I think yesterday or this morning, and I commented, you 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 tweeted out or X'd out, whatever it's called now, <laughs> the list of outfielders, right? Yeah. And it yeah. seemed to drop off after the starting three. But mm -hmm. now you're adding another one into that mix. So you know what, Pete? They saw your tweet and they made no. the move. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, you know, listen, this, this is all interconnected. So we're going to talk about that um, straight after the first ad. Uh, and... But we'll we'll cover it and our first ad of the day on a Super Bowl Sunday as well. Um, it's our good friends over at iBorder. Yes, sir. And the new year for many people means resolutions to save money. So stop shopping without getting anything in return. Start getting cash back on every purchase you make with iBorder. After the holidays, we could all use a little extra cash in our pockets, especially after all of the gift giving. We still need to buy the everyday things we need. Make sure you're getting cash back on all of your everyday purchases with iBorder. iBorder is a free app. Yes, you heard that correctly. It's a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure everything you're buying is beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average iBorder user earns 145 bucks per year. 145 bucks per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip. Buy that flight you've been eyeing or that game you've been dying to go to. Or even with Valentine's coming, that fancy dinner you've been craving. So what do you have to do? Pretty simple, guys. Right now, iBorder is offering our listeners five bucks just for trying iBorder 
by using the code locked on MLB when you register. Did you hear that? That's free money, free five bucks just for trying the app with that promo code locked on MLB. So just go to the App Store or Google Play Store, download the free iBorder app to start earning cash back and use that code locked on MLB. How do you spell iBorder? I can hear you say, well, if you've got the graphics, you can you can read. But for those that don't have the graphics, I will spell it out for you. It's I B O T T A. So I bought a in the R uh, in the Google in the I Google Play in the Google Play or App Store, and use that code locked on M L B. Right, guys, back here with me, Peter Pratt, and Chase the Loud Miami fan on Super Bowl Sunday. We are running through an emergency podcast here. Nick Gordon acquired by the Marlins. And Stephen Okert going back in return to the Twins. Chase, we've already started to piece this together in our minds. What does it mean for X and literally X? Let's start there. Xavier Edwards was the first person that came to mind from my perspective. Xavier Edwards, great end to 2023. I love the profile. However, does have minor league options. So as I'm starting to piece this together, I'm thinking, ooh, I wonder if this is going to mean, listen, X, just start you off in trip and triple A. Be ready to go. Your next guy up. But how do you see this impact in Xavier Edwards? I hope Xavier Edwards is on this opening day roster. I hope he has a wonderful spring where they can't say no. Whether that's him playing at a position spot in the season or being that super utility. If we're penciling in Birdie as the starting shortstop again, anything could change. If we're oh penciling in Birdie then Xavier Edwards takes the birdie role. He uh, played outfield and infield last year in the minors, did pretty well at it, was great. He was the Luis Arise of the minor leagues last season. The guy just kept hitting and hitting and hitting, came up, kept hitting and hitting and hitting. I think he hit in the 290s, I think, somewhere in there, maybe higher 280s as a Marlin. In, yeah, I think it was nearly 300 up, he hit, Xavier Edwards. Nearly, yeah, I, yeah, I haven't got it in front of me, but nearly 300, if not over. And if he comes in doing the same in the spring, you need that on your roster. It's great for stability. It's great to have um, him as a spot starter. I, well, I'm, I'm, very, I'm not worried about it because I think he's just good. But mm. I, I just like you, I thought, what about Xavier? Does this take the spot away? Because I never really saw Bruhan being better than Xavier. Now... Xavier yep. does have those options. So yep. if you maybe you get to the time where it's the 27 minute you start with, you know, for the first two weeks, I believe. And then mm -hmm. when you got to cut it down to 26, you'll make a decision at that point. But this is not saying that Bruhan will even make the team. Um, he yep. has no minor league options. Uh, Nick Gordon has no minor league options, but you don't yep. create a guy like Okert to not play this guy or not have him on your roster. Agreed. Talk to me then about John Birdie, because I, I think this is interesting, specifically around John Birdie, because John Birdie's value to the Marlins is as a as the, one of the best, if not the best, utility guys in baseball. However, he is earning over $3 million. That's a problem for the Marlins, because they want to pay you league minimum, or close to. So you've got a guy that is being paid a decent chunk, but in the grand scheme, it's a really you know team friendly deal for a guy that's really valuable. However, the Marlins have gone and acquired at least two more John Birdies. Um, whether they're as good as John Birdie is up for debate. However, at this point, I'm looking at John Birdie specifically, thinking, well, could they move John Birdie? Do they want to move John Birdie? Save a bit of dough, bring in someone else, different type of talent. I don't know, like. I just don't, for me, I'm looking and thinking maybe this is the most obvious move here is to move John Birdie on and, and you know, get a different player back with more control and less cost right now. So, however, just on the flip side of that, because I know you're probably thinking similar, but on the flip side, when Skip Schumacher's asked about the shortstop position, um, you know, a few weeks back, Carl Seelaf, I think, put the question to him, you know, who's starting a shortstop basically opening day? He was like, right now it's Birdie. So Birdie's the, the starting shortstop. So would the Marlins consider trading what could be their starting shortstop this offseason? 
They will not trade John Birdie unless they get a shortstop back, a actual shortstop back. Yeah. Um, John Birdie is your opening day shortstop. Hopefully a healthy spring comes in mm-hmm. hot. The only problem with John Birdie playing a position full time is we've seen in the last two seasons, he, he starts to fatigue out by the 10th game, even if it's he gets a rest in that time period. But by the 10th to 12th yeah. game, playing straight or straight through with a day off here and there, he starts to flame out a little bit and gets tired. He's a trade piece, depending on how the season goes towards the trade deadline. You know, it's everything you just said is true. A little high in money, not so many years left of control. You're building under him, which that's what you have to do in the league. You're building yep. enough to replace as the next guy up. Uh, I don't. Th- I, I really think Birdie will be here. I think his he's probably the only guy out of this group that is is not going anywhere or not being said to maybe not make the opening day roster. Yeah, I think if he's here, he's on the roster, clearly. Um, I think the question is, is whether he's here. And I, I think it's definitely something to watch. You know, we're kind of maybe sleeping on that situation. But I think as you sit there and piece it together, you've got a guy earning four times as much as anyone else in this group, uh, a guy that's running out of um, control, and you've effectively acquired multiple replacements for him. So I think it's one of those eye emoji situation with John Birdie. I'm not saying we should trade him, but I think it's something to watch in the next couple of weeks. But it, yeah, to your point right now, he's he's inked in, I would guess, to be you know the starting shortstop. So uh, I'm more worried about Jacob Amaya because yep. um, the Marlins came in, traded Rojas, goes, I bought a uh, Jacob mm-hmm. Amaya. And he's supposed to be the heir apparent to Rojas. His defense, I guess, was, was as stellar, they said, mm-hmm. as, a, as a prospect. And his bat was supposed to be good or better than Rojas. But he didn't come to fruition in 23. This yeah. is a big year for him because, you know, he's supposed to be the heir apparent. If they keep getting pieces to build at that role, he's going to start getting layered. And what does this mean for Jacob Barry? who also is a high draft pick, is an infielder. Are they converting him to outfield now that Peyton Burdick's kind of out of the picture? It's a lot of questions this raises, but it's great to have the ability to ask these questions. Definitely. I'm going to let you dwell on this question. So I'm going to ask it. I'm going to do the ads, and then we'll come back and talk about it. The question is, I know we're saying that John Birdie is likely to be the starting shortstop. However, with Nick Gordon being acquired, and his history of playing center field. Let me just put this to you without answering, because I want you to answer after the ad. But is Jazz Chisholm actually the best shortstop on this roster? He moved to center field to solve a need. Does this trade also maybe solve that need? And could Jazz be the one that is most impacted by that? We're going to talk about that after the ad. Uh, But before we do that, uh, good friends over at... FanDuel, yes, sir. My laptop is going slow. <laughs> it is Super Bowl Sunday, I guess. Um, so we'll we'll get the graphics going firstly. So that's good. Um, and I mentioned this this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. And happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel. It is America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. Yes, sir. And there are a lot of bets out there. I've seen tons of parlays flying around. Absolutely. Big Andy Slater has got a huge parlay. So if you're interested in that, pile in on Andy Slater's uh, parlay. He's been doing well on them this year. But FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a fat dub or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a TD, of course, how many points will be scored, and so, so much more. New customers, yes, new customers join today and you get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with Fanduel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Welcome back to Locked On Marlins' final segment here with me, Peter Pratt, and Chase the Loud Miami fan. We are hitting it up with an emergency podcast on Super Bowl Sunday. I have posed the question to Chase. 
is Jazz Chisholm actually the best shortstop on this Marlins roster right now, irrespective of him being penciled in at center fields heading into 24? Jazz is not the best <laughs> shortstop on this <laughs> roster. Jazz is the best center fielder on this roster, and that's mm -hmm. where we're going to keep him. There's a lot of talk. Jazz said before last season, yes, I'd like to move back to shortstop, but they wouldn't invest the time and the money and the effort in training him to be a center fielder if they ever planned on moving mm -hmm. him back to the infield. It's not mm -hmm. happening. It's great for discussions. John Birdie is the best shortstop as is right now on this roster. Yeah. Fair answer. Fair answer. Jazz wouldn't agree with you, by the way. If he was on this as a three-way pod, Jazz would say, Chase, you're talking a nonsense. But Jazz um, would say he's the best player at every position but catcher and pitcher. So, I mean, I think he can sling it, you know. I, <laughs> I think he could if he if he wanted to. Um, let, me, let me ask you about another guy that I think we should be talking about, particularly because we talked about the outfield. Like, the sense I get here from the Marlins – uh, is they're seeing Nick Gordon as a utility guy, but kind of a, with a lean to an outfield position. So with that in mind, Jazz, you keeping him at center field. DLC, Jesus Sanchez, feel like the starters right now. You then have potentially a platoon option with Jesus Sanchez of Avicel Garcia and his two years of 12 million remaining. So from this move's perspective... Could this be the final nail in the Avisel Garcia Marlins career? Avisel Garcia will either be the DH or off this team. They are not putting him back on the field. He's not a great fielder. He's not fast enough anymore. The game's moved a little bit too quick for him. Uh, they want to mm -hmm. keep him injury free. Him going after balls, diving. I don't think he ever dove, but let's say he did. <laughs> Uh, let's say he dove for a ball. They don't want him to get injured. The guy can't jump anymore. If he gets to the wall, he can't be bringing in those uh, grand slams from being home runs. Shout mm. out to my boy, yeah, Sanchi, for that last year. Yeah, yeah, what I, a grab. I, in all truthfulness, no jokes aside, if obviously Garcia plays like crap in the spring, mm -hmm. he's not going to make this team, and they're going to have to eat the money. They're just There's too much now of a bottleneck out in, out in the outfield. I mean, you just, sure. if you wanted power, you just cut Burdick. You're bringing in guys. You have power in Sanchi, but he can't hit against lefties. So, if anything, I'm looking at more Gordon, Sanchi, uh, platoon out there, uh, depending on who's pitching, unless one of them just outshines the other so well, you have to play him. Uh, and yep. I, I don't see DLC. I hope he's never injured, so I'm going to knock on wood here. But with, without an injury, DLC is your left fielder. He hit 19 home runs last year. Every year he's gotten six more, so I expect 25 to 30 out of him this year. He He's only going to get better in more playing time in the outfield, and I don't think he's that bad as everybody makes him. But anyway, so you have – and, and you're short, your center – here's the big thing, right? And mm -hmm. here's the, two, que the biggest question, Mark, that no one can answer. Will Jazz stay healthy? Because if Jazz doesn't stay healthy, this conversation's mute, and you have enough – in that pipeline to fill that role, mm -hmm. uh, which we all hope Jazz stays healthy and hits goes 40 for 40 this season. Um, for sure. And then, but obviously you, you and I were discussing, he is the biggest question mark because he's not, he he's on this roster. He's taking yeah. up a spot that could be given to a youthful, uh, younger, youthful, younger player, youthful mm -hmm. player going into their prime or give them playing time. Uh, so it's going to be a big spring for him. And, they're not paying him 12.5 to sit on the bench. It's, it's just not happening. Yeah, I, it feels like it's been a recurring conversation around Avicel Garcia. I'm going to put it out there right now. The, my, m the most likely situation, I think, with Avi is that the Marlins, app, they do find a way to trade him before opening day. I believe they will find a way to trade him. They may have to retain some of the dough, but that's better than eating 12 and a half. I think there is... From Avicel Garcia, there's there are teams out there that are looking for a right-handed stick that could do something. And maybe a team could see this as a reclamation in some sort of way. Like Avi's record against left-handed pitching 
is okay. It hasn't worked out in Miami. But I think there's enough teams looking for this type of thing that I think the Marlins could find a way to get a deal done. If indeed they, you know, maybe they want to retain Avi and they see value. And he is a good platoon partner with Jesus Sanchez. But it feels like it's the best for all parties to, to move on at this point. And I feel like the Marlins could well get that done. There's definitely a few clubs that are hunting this kind of right-handed, outfieldery, DH, bench, bat, something. So we'll see if they can get it done. I, I don't know if I'll be back on the show before spring. You uh, I just wanted to throw this at. <laughs> I probably won't. Um, I just wanted to sh- throw, I don't know, unless you invite me in the next week. But I did want to throw this out there just to let you know. I'm, I'm excited for this spring. Mm. Um, I, I, I'm excited now more for the uh, shortstop battle that's going to happen, who, mm. who will be there. But I think the spring is going to be huge for Johnston because he kind of falls in this too. If he yep. has to make the team as your backup first baseman, that's another spot taken. So yep. it's it's a lot of noise out there and good noise. I want to hear those bats going and whatnot. So it's just exciting time to be a Marlins fan. Definitely. It's a great opportunity for Troy Johnston, to be honest. Like with spring and the way the roster's shaken up, like they haven't made any moves, you know, to, to address first base, I would say in particular. Like, you know, there's no, there's been no Yuli Gurriel thus far. So... That spot is open for Troy, for Troy Johnson. The question is, is, the, is that spot actually taken by Luis Arias and actually the middle infielders kind of shuffle around? Wait and see. Um, we're running long on time, to be expected, because this is a fun trade. It is a huge upside trade for the Marlins, miles more upside than for the Twins, personally. We haven't spoken about Stephen Okert at all, so I want to at least give a minute or two on Stephen Okert. When we think about Okert, he ended the season so poorly in 23. Uh, his confidence was gone. You could see it like he was completely shot at the back end of 23. The Marlins have a plethora of lefties. They had so much depth, lefties out of the pen. The Twins had a bit of a log jam. So did the Marlins. Actually, that's why this trade came together. It's a perfect match because you're trading excess with excess. The Marlins get the better deal out of it because their upside is much higher than Oakwood, in my opinion. But... Overall, for Okurt, it ended poorly in 23, though, Chase. However, I must say, Okurt, he's been you know, a good couple of seasons with the Marlins. He's been pretty effective all in all and actually has had a you know, had a decent Marlins career. And so, you know, it, it didn't end the best, but we should remember Okurt for, you know, what he contributed. And I think that has been, you know, above average, I would say, for the majority, to be honest with you. So, last memories on Okurt, not that he's died, but uh, he's no longer a Marlin. <laughs> last memories of him as a Marlin. Yeah. Um, is there are really no big <laughs> memories. Um, and he'll be remembered for short term as not playing well, but I can't name one p- pitch or something that really blew a game in my mind, which is great. I also can't remember. <laughs> That's good. I can't remember one outing that really made a difference either. So he's a, he was a viable pitcher for us. Thank you for your time. Mm. You know, you gave your body for our entertainment and, we thank you for that. Good luck in Minnesota. Let's wish fair, farewell, goodbye, and we'll beat you up when we see you. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, we will see him because we see everyone now every year, which is great. So we're in Minnesota this year. In Minnesota, there you go. So that should be fun. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we see Pablito as well, which should be fun as well. Um, but it's interesting the Marlins and Twins like getting together on you know a couple of trades. This one definitely is not as big as last off season's one, but I definitely feel like this is going to be more of a fat dub for the Marlins. But nevertheless, we're going to wrap it up there, guys. Emergency podcast on Super Bowl Sunday. Nick Gordon traded to the Marlins. Uh, Stephen Okert going the other way uh, to the Minnesota Twins. What does it mean? It's too early to tell, to be honest with you, but. The Marlins get a guy that has a proven-ish track record, a one-season track record of some interesting upside, a lot of defensive versatility. Sounds very familiar. The Marlins have a lot of these same guys. And so, as Chase rightly called out, heading into spring, it's going to be very, very intriguing. My eyes are also on John Birdie. I'm very intrigued to see whether the Marlins actually retain John Birdie and whether he remains a Marlin headed into opening day. There's value with Birdie. And I do wonder with all this uh, talent with similar traits, whether John Birdie could be the next guy moved. Thanks for joining me, Peter Pratt and Chase. I appreciate you joining me, buddy, for an emergency podcast 
Enjoy the Super Bowl, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.